And say goodbye to the batter. This is probably going to be about the last of this batter. Um, it might help if I take this off first. Tommy G. Maybe. I don't know. Slowly. Because, you know, cold dabs, e rig, you know. Oh, I forgot to get a, a Q tip ready. Um, don't forget your swab is swabs. You know, I like to be ready before I get there. <laughs> Let's go to camera three. Yeah. How do you be? How you be up there? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I see you up there. Ah. Um. <clears throat> so today, um, I've got a new camera and stuff. A new camera and a, a new used camera. And I'd be clear about that. I knew used camera, but we'll get into that. And I got some uh, stuff and stuff. Um, so after I finish this, uh, you know, zippity doo da, yippity hee, or whatever they be, <coughs> I'll show ye. I'll show ye. I'll show ye. All right. Slice it, slice, swab it, swab, and I'll be after these messages. Right back. So first, I guess I'll just show you the stuff that I already had. Um, obviously, the GX85 I've had for a little while now. This does have a little problem with it is uh, on the battery door. Um, I, I mean, it didn't used to be like this. I don't know what fucking happened, but... Uh, like, the door gets a little bit jammed now. Sometimes I have to, like, actually t pull this little thing out and, like, pry it open. And the battery goes down there. And it makes contact and powers on and everything. But it doesn't spring back out when you hit that little thing. Sometimes you have to, like, figure out a way to pull it out. Um, my dad is supposed to bring me some, uh, what do you call it, like, ribbon tape. Uh, to lay in there, make it a little bit easier to pull them out. But uh, I don't know how uh, much we're going to be using this on battery uh, going forward because I got the, uh, I don't know how much I'm going to be using this out in the field. I might, I might. Um, but for the most part, like filming here at home, I've got the uh, dummy battery with the AC attached to it and whatever, uh, the best score thing. Um so, yeah, um, and that is the, uh, was it the, I think 12 to 35 or something? There's the, uh, 12 to 32, uh, lens that came with it. And it came with another lens too, and I'll probably show you that when we get to the, uh, camera itself, uh, or the new one, the GH5, uh, Spoiler alert, if you can't read. Uh, <coughs> I've had this ball head for a little bit, too. And what we're going to do with this one is uh, we're actually going to take this light uh, over here. And uh, we are going to take this thing. This thing is really fucking cool. Uh, you Basically, you clamp it onto whatever pole. And then you've got these three ball-headed magnet mounts right here. And uh, so, spoiler alert, again, you know, uh, we're going to put this on one of these magnet heads. And uh, then, you know, pop the light up here. 
and the same with the GX85. We're going to put on uh, the far, whichever far end it ends up being, and then we can take the uh, microphone right here because this is already on one of these little uh, magnet mount things, and uh, yeah, we'll put that when we're like filming from the computer and facing this way, uh, you know, we could just move the microphone over there, magnet mount, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's what it dreezy. That's what it dreezy. The uh, obstacle to all of that is going to be that uh, it's going to obscure my view of the TV. Um, but again, because it's all on magnet mounts, I can just pull it off when I'm not filming and still got full view of the TV and stuff. Uh, so, and you know, I'll still be able to at least monitor myself as I'm recording enough. Uh, unlike facing this way, all I got now is this tiny little five inch screen fucking bullshit. Um, but yeah, so that is, uh. Oh, that is not everything uh, that we already had. Before I get into the stuff that, like, all just came. Well, actually, one of the lenses um, that I'm going to show you, we've I've had for a little while now. But, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I got another lens, so I'm going to, you know, show you those together, I guess. Um, but this is the other thing um, that I've actually had for a little while now. This is the... Uh, uh, Feyo, Feyo AK4500, AK45, whatever, whatever, uh, gimbal, and I bought this to use with my, uh, GX85. The problem is, is that when you mount the GX85 up here, like so, and you get it all balanced out and everything, the, uh, ports right here where your HDMI and stuff comes out, uh, is blocked by the side motor thing here, um, which means that no external monitor, and uh, especially if I'm shooting outside, uh, there's my thingy thing, uh, you know, I need that external monitor, um, because the monitor on the GX85, you are not going to see in sunlight. You are not going to see that shit in the sunlight. There, it, it ain't nowhere near nitty enough for all of that. Uh, it's, I think, maybe four or five hundred nits. Uh, I don't th really doubt that it's even that bright. Um, whereas the, uh, well, where is it? I've got it, like, sitting uh, over here with my stuff somewhere is my... Uh, my little feely feel world. This is the, uh, fuck, what is the model? Uh, this, uh, DC, this is the model, uh, DCN 12 volt. Uh, no, it's, uh, I can't remember what the, uh, model number is. Um, to be perfectly honest, which is weird because usually I'm really, really good about remembering model numbers and shit like that, but whatever. Um, this one, uh, is a thousand nits and stuff, and, uh, you know, I've tried it out in the daylight, and it's, you know, it's pretty good, it's pretty good, it's about as good as, uh, like, the iPhone 14 Max, um, uh, you know, it's pretty good, and <clears throat> a word as we're talking about, um, you know, testing, do, well, we haven't started talking about it yet, but as, you know, we're talking in the future of this video about testing and doing more testing video and stuff like that, um, I plan on doing some testing with the new camera and the, uh, gimbal, but, um, I don't know how that's going to go because I'm not, you know, I'm not an experienced gimbal user. Um, I've had a couple of the, uh, smartphone gimbals, um, but, you know, this is me trying to step up my game and step out of my comfort zone and try new things. And the gimbal is probably something because if the inbody, it, if the IBIS of the GH5 is as good as everybody is saying that it is, for most things, I won't even need, I won't need the gimbal. But, um, you know, for using, so, doing some of those like low-lying shots, 
you know, where my knees is good, not my knees be good, not at all. Um, you know, I could see it really, really, really coming in handy for like those types of shots. But before I get any test footage with that thing um, to post on this channel, um, you know, I want to make sure I get some technique down with it because I've I've tried it a little bit already. And uh, with the GX85, again, super hard because the monitor is on the back. So if I want to film myself, I can't see myself. But um, and also because, you know, yeah, you know, I can't. Yeah, I can't put that external monitor on there. There's just no way to do it. Uh, and the screen on the GX85 be not that great, you know. Anyway, um, so... Uh, that it's going to take me some practice to get used to filming on that. It's nothing like filming on one of those smartphone gimbals. Uh, not at all. Another kind of random thing that I picked up here recently um, was this. It This is um, basically a poncho. <laughs> oh, I need to roll over here. Um, this is basically a poncho uh, for the camera. The way that this works is, and I'll explain, you know, why I wanted to get one of these um, here in a minute. But, you know, yeah, it's like a little rain poncho for your camera. And then uh, it opens up, like, uh, down in here. Um, where's the thing? I got to refigure this whole fucking thing out. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So you can, uh, you know, fit your camera in from the back and then you could uh, mount it right there and then you got your lens thing right here with a little uh, tie so you know yeah because I'm gonna be able to film some rainstorms and stuff for my uh, nature videos and stuff I would love to do a relaxation rain video the problem that I still have is how do I set up my microphone uh, protected from the rain because I'm recording the, all of that in ambisonics. You know, I need the ambisonics to help me with the surround mixing and post. And uh, I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, you know, I thought about an umbrella or something like that, but then you get the, uh, you know, sound of the raindrops hitting the umbrella. Um, so I don't know. That's one I'm still trying to figure out. And like fresh off the press, uh, pretty much, kind of, kind of. Uh, like, I mean, I got them in like yesterday. Uh, was <laughs> two more of these magnet mounts like I was talking about. Uh, the magnet mounts like I got on the uh, bottom. Oh, I guess you can't see it because I put those in the way. The uh, magnet mount on the uh, bottom of our microphone right here. I am sorry if that makes brushing, handling noises and stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, um, but, yeah. So I got us a couple more of these to accommodate with the uh, magnet mount thing. And a ball head. Um, I, another ball head so uh, to put the GX85 up on top of here. I got the, uh, showed you the ball head that I'm going to put the light on top of. And uh, so then I'm going to put the uh, GX85 up on this. So we'll have two little unboxings. These are, again, the only thing new <laughs> in these videos. Well, I mean, the camera and stuff is new to me, um, but it is used. Uh, and you'll see why I got it used. I mean, well, it's a GH85, so, or excuse me, it's a GH5. Um, so, like, B&H doesn't, you know, the only ones you're going to find even on B&H are going to be used. But I got mine on uh, eBay. Um, I thought it was a pretty good deal. Uh, so, the thing that interested me about this is I've got one similar to this, I think, is Ulanzi. Uh, in the living room, this is uh, Zalit, Zalitu, Zalitu, I have no idea, I apologize, um, but it's, you know, it's like that one where uh, 
instead of, you know, having the uh, ball head and then pole going up to the thing, it has the pole and then the ball head is actually on the, uh, what do you call it, the Arca Swiss mount. Um, and so I, I really like that ball head. I really do. I really like that reverse um, thing. It feels like I, it's a lot easier to get the camera like uh, nice and stable and, uh, you know, or balanced rather. Uh, so let's get that out of the way. Well, I'll just bother unboxing one of these for the purpose of this video, um, just to show you, show you, because it's really not much uh, to this at, like at all. It's like literally just a magnet with a quarter twenty thread on it. But they're like tw they're only like twelve bucks a piece, uh, you know. So it this is uh, Oban MM fifty MM fifty keep coming around here giving it mm fitty it's gonna keep coming back back around here looking for fucking mm fitty whatever I, I fucked that whole joke up uh but the first time i bought one of these i caught it as one of those deal of the day things where it was basically the same price but also included the ball head um that my road video mic go to is sitting on right now on the magnet mount thing you know um but yeah the you know these things are a fucking godsend really what these are designed to do is uh you know go on metal surfaces and stuff and they work great for that too um but they also work pretty good with this uh magnet mount thing that I got uh with the clamping thing uh the this thing the this thing whatever it's called uh this is oh there is the uh brand name whatever you want to call it, Land Parte, Land Parte. So basically what we're going to do is, uh, next we're going to actually get to the, we're going to get to the main show, we're going to get to the camera, um, but before we do that, I want to just kind of explain uh, what we're going to do here going forward is, uh, for the rest of this video is, uh, after we unbox the uh, camera, um, we're not going to do any test footage with the new camera in this video. Uh, but we are going to end the video with uh, me switching over to the GX85 over here. And, uh, you know, get that set up and stuff. And then tonight I'm going to shoot a separate video uh, from the living room with the GH5 and I might bring the GX85 and film separately on it too um you know just to have a little compare compare um oh um it's a good thing we didn't go yet because I forgot to show you the lenses too um but you know yeah so we'll do that and then the reason that we're doing that though is because uh you know we want to uh do the test footage from the G8-6 in 4K. And what we're recording right now is bottlenecked at 1080p with the uh, ATEM Extreme ISO. Uh, so, you know, we want to, you know, get that 4K footage uh, up, up in the show, up in the thing, up in the thingy thing. Uh, but yeah, so... This is the lens that I already had. This is the uh, Panasonic 25mm 1.7. Um, this is the lens that I used on the uh, was it the unboxing of uh, this Matrix Glass flat top attachment thing right here. And I thought that that fucking picture was beautiful. I did play with it a little bit in post, but not a whole lot. Not as much as you would think. Uh, that Cinelike pro, uh, the Cinelike hack profile on the GX85 with this lens uh, was, you know, I thought is beautiful. It was fucking beautiful. The, uh, but I also just got, because a 25 millimeter, you know, uh, is a 50 millimeter equivalent. So to get that shot of me sitting on the couch, I had to put the camera on the other side of the room. Uh, and I mean, that works, uh, but you know, 
sometimes you want to shoot a little closer up where space is in a crunch or you know whatever different different tools for different jobs so i got a 14 mil 2.5 um, i got a really good deal on this too uh this was uh oh fuck what did it end up being it was uh $120 and it was supposed to come with a uh, filter and did not but I don't care because uh, I've, it was a UV filter and I've already got a UV filter plus an ND filter um, for these lenses uh, and uh, well yeah I'll pull those out and show you those too real quick I'm not gonna actually pull them out of the packaging or anything just you know show and tell uh whatever but you know yeah so i got the neutral density filter uh when i got the uh 25 mil and then i got the 95 percent whoa <laughs> the 95 percent uv and then i've got another uh what do you call it uh uv filter for the uh kit lens that came with the gx 85 uh and I might as well show you now while we're, uh, you know, looking at it. This is the other kit lens that came with the, uh, I bought the lens hood separate, but uh, with the GX85. And this is a 45 millimeter to 150. Uh, and the uh, aperture, I think, is like 3.5 or 4, uh, something like that. But it's actually a pretty decent zoom lens, uh, you know, for, I think with the two kit lenses, the GX85 was like $100 more. And both of those lenses are nothing to write home about, in my personal opinion, but well worth the $100 for the pair of them, you know? Just, yeah. Um, but something I want to do real quick, um, and I haven't even tried this 25, or the 14 mil, excuse me, out yet. Uh, so one of the first things I want to try is this. Uh, I'm hoping that this will work, but I'm doubting it. Um, no, there's no way. As this doesn't have the uh, decorative ring thingy me bobber that the uh, that the 25 mil has. Whoa, to accommodate for this sun hood, uh, which is a shame, because you know personal opinion i guess whatever but i think that for shooting outdoors uh even on a pancake lens like this um uh, sun hood should be an essential uh but you can always rig something up too and this lens cap is not staying on uh i mean the uh, what do you call it the uh body cap or whatever side <laughs> is not staying on very well there we go I got it. I got it. All right. So we're going to snip, slicey cut, and, you know, all of that stuff up in the butt. <laughs> I am sorry. I am fucking sorry. Uh, but after these messages, we'll be right back. Get back here with my show. And I uh, <laughs> forgot to mention before I cut the break, too, um, about this ball head. That this one actually has a uh, quarter inch 20 thread and a cold shoe mount. Uh, you know, options, options. Um, that is exactly why I got this one again instead of the, uh, you, I think was the, the other one was the Ulanzi or something like that. Um, anyway, um, so in the world of videography, if you've been following this channel um, since the old days, you know, I'm always trying to, you know, get a little bit better at a time, do a little bit more at a time, you know. And I, I, it's time for me to expand my range um, dynamically, if that makes sense. Um, you know, in other words, what I'm saying is it's time for me to go from being the automatic settings guy um, to learning to expose my pictures and everything to get the best possible pictures um and you know i think i'm I, i'm ready for that uh and i can do that 
with the GX85, 100, 100. Um, but the GH5 here is going to give me a lot more options with like the 10 bit color and the V log. And, um, you know, there's like a, a shitload of features on here. And <clears throat> the output ports for the HDMI will not be covered up, more importantly, by the side motor thing on the uh, gimbal, uh, you know. So, I mean, it's an upgrade in every way. It's an upgrade in every way. Uh, so, I got this camera for uh, around $700. It, it was about, I could have gotten one in really good condition used straight from B&H for about the same price. Uh, but that one only came with the original accessories and stuff. And this one is supposed to have like five batteries. It's got a uh, dummy uh, battery with a uh, D-tap on it. Uh, and it's got a uh, like a little bracket and stuff. And more importantly... The V-Log is already installed. So uh, usually, you know, with the GH5, you had to uh, buy the V-Log. Uh, it was an add-on purchase. Uh, so in order to get the camera with the V-Log from B&H, uh, you know, it was going to end up being like, I think, over $700 uh, or $800, something like that. Um, whereas here, you know, it was just a much better deal. The one question I have, uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to show you that because it's a key code. I don't know if it's something that you can steal or not, but you know, just safety, safety. And there's a little packing slip. You won't need to see that. Uh, neither will my father. So, uh, sorry, I just flipped it around, uh, you know, but the, uh, I don't think that I'll actually need that key code to activate the V-Log on here, but if I do, you know, it's right here. Um, so, you know, so far, so good. Uh, and I'm not going to bother showing you all the manuals and stuff, you know, because you know about that. Um, <laughs> I did in the last video. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I think this is the camera, so we'll save that for uh, last. And so it looks like we got, yeah, our, uh, some brackets. And that is the, uh, D-tap plug I was talking about. And, uh, I think, I'm not 100% sure about this piece, but I think that this is, like, for, uh, cable management. Um, and then we've got the battery charger and, uh, plug for the battery charger. Um... I don't have a uh, AC dummy battery for this yet. Um, I'm probably going to get one, um, but this is going to be primarily a uh, more of a field camera um, than a f at home film camera filming whatever. <laughs> Basically, what I'm spraying is you know, uh, I mean we'll. I will use it to film like the our talking head stuff in the living room and uh, everything, but uh, you know, like doing my nature videos and stuff like that. I mean, and I'm, you know, I want to grow as a videographer, and I want to possibly even get into filming and making music videos. Uh, you know, I believe in myself. I could do it. I could do it. Uh, where did my finger go? Oh, hello, finger, finger. What's that singer? Uh, I, I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, little dude. Um, but I'm special like that, you know. Uh, ooh, we're cutting here, as they say in my dad's native country. We're cutting here, we're cutting here. Oh, pop. So this is uh, the thing that I am curious about with the batteries is 
are these going to be like the actual Panasonic batteries or are these going to be like the uh, third party batteries? I'm going to, I'm not even going to look yet. We're going to turn this into a little game. I am sorry if I just gave you a spoiler because that one was turned over. Uh, let us see. Genuine or third party? Let's play. Number one, everybody, cast your votes. Cast your votes. Panasonic. Uh, let us uh, zoom in a little bit more because, you know, these uh, smally righty righties. Uh, or whatever, put on your tidy whities I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, you know. Just, you know, I'm special. Uh, and number two. Oh, nope, we got Power Extra. Um, I do not know anything about that brand. We got a Watson. I've had good luck with Watsons. Uh, another Power Extra. And is this one going to be? No, this one is... Uh, I guess we're just going to call this a OEM uh, because I do not see any branding or anything on there. But that's okay. Um, a lot of times these third-party batteries are fine. Um, I have, I believe it's Watson's for my, G8, or my GX85. And I have the, you know, I mean a, the one original and then I've got four, I think, Watson's. And... I get, I don't know, around an hour 20 or so out of the original and about an hour, maybe hour 5 to 10 out of the Watson. So it's not a huge impact. And, you know, I actually, in doing my research for this camera, saw a lot of people that were actually complaining about the battery life on here. But they were saying that they get around two and a half hours on a battery shooting in 4K. So... If these third-party batteries will get me two hours um, and the Panasonic gets me a full two and a half hours, you know, that, that that's gravy to me, baby. That is all gravy to me. Uh, time will tell. Uh, time will tell. Because that's, you know, that's how they sell. And, you know, I'm not even going to do a, like, full review. That's why I'm not bothering to do test footage and stuff for this specific video. Um, just because there, you know, this camera is, like, six years old or something. So, there is a shitload of videos on YouTube about this camera. Um, doing my research on this camera, it was either going to be this or the G9. Uh, and, uh, you know, I did... I did plenty of due diligence in my research, and there was plenty of information to get. There's a shitload of tutorials on this camera, you know. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm just saying there is no shortage of info out there. Um, zoom is zoom. Zoom. Actually, Panasonic, but you know. I do love Zoom preamps, though. And so it already has this bracket thing um, attached to it, which is cool. Um, I was really, really hoping, but I mean, I already could tell by, like, looking at the pictures that it wasn't. But I was really hoping that this would be more like a fitted half cage or something, uh, you know, with some quarter 20 threads on there. But it's not... Um, and, you know, I guess that's all right. That's all right. Um, I'm, you know, when I can afford it, because uh, I'm, like, breaking myself getting this camera, um, I am going to uh, get a cage for it. Um, and the cage I was looking at, it's like 60 bucks. It's not bad. Uh, where's the GX85? So we could do a, a size thing. So that is a... Uh, two. That is a pretty big difference. Uh, you know, that is a beefy boy compared to the GX85. Uh, but uh, let me switch to 
you know, over here. Um, uh, that feels really fucking good in the hand, though. I, I don't think I like having the, uh, record button up there, but, uh, you know, I think that you can make it so that the shutter button will, uh, you know, trigger the record. Um, and this does have a half press, too. Uh, that's useful if uh, you want to get away from the autofocus, because that was something else that I heard on this camera, is that the autofocus is terrible. Uh, I mean, the autofocus on the GX85 isn't, isn't very good. Um, so, you know, we'll see. But I like that it has this full-size HDMI port on here. That is gravy. Uh, all of YouTube uh, cameraographers, or whatever you want to call it, uh, will unanimously agree with me here in about three seconds when I say that micro HDMI is fucking terrible. It is fucking terrible. And, uh, oh, that is USB-C. Um, I thought I saw somebody said that they, it was a micro uh, connection USB on here. Um, uh, let me uh, try that. That looks USB-C to me. So, yes, that is USB-C. Nice. The uh, I'm gonna really interested to see what all I can and can't do. I know already a couple of things that you can't do with the USB-C is... I don't think that you can record to uh, SSD and you can't like charge the battery and if you can't charge the battery I'm assuming that you can't power the camera through the USB-C and that is a shame that really really is a shame because you know there's a lot of stuff you can do with USB-C um, the implementation just has to be there um, but then that was a that's another great thing for this camera is that is not it uh that is the uh i believe the remote port and uh or no that is a headphone port okay nice and uh okay yeah over on this side is the remote uh so that will allow me to control this from the gimbal that is very, 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 very nice. And on this side, look, look, you guys, I don't know how well this is going to work out, but, you know, there is an input jack. So, what that means is that um, traditionally, when we are, uh, like, recording our audio, you know, we're recording our audio separately um, through the video mic go to sometimes through the wireless go to and sometimes directly to the Tascam X8 um, and then I sync it all in together in post um, but if the preamps do okay with this camera then uh, you know might just record internally you know that is a time saver uh, you know Syncing audio with video in DaVinci is so much easier than it used to be for, well, for any software or video editor, however, you know, back in the day. Um, because you have to, you know, you use the clapper to create those large waveforms, and then you have to, you know, go super tight and then adjust them to, you know, line up in post. And uh, with DaVinci, you can auto-align by clip or by waveform, and uh, you can go through the sync menu and have it automatically sync by waveform or by time code, and uh, there's a few other ways to do it, you know. But, yeah. Um, so let's take a look at the battery. Yeah, okay, so... Now you can see why it's going to get that, you know, extra battery time. Because, man, these batteries are beefy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here's one of the Watsons for comparison. You know, this is one of the Watsons uh, for my GX85. 
uh, you know, that's a pretty big difference. Um, this one, okay, this one is 2200 milliamps. Let's try to check them all. Um, this one is 220 milliamps at 16.3 watt hours. Oh, I am not putting that down there where you guys can actually like see it. Um, and uh, the official Panasonic battery is actually only 1800 milliamps at 14 watts per hour. Uh, and oh, that's the fucking Watson. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right, we already did one of the Power Extra, and the other one here is another Watson. It is seventeen fifty milliamps and twelve point nine five watts per hour. So yeah, there's not a whole lot. I mean, I can really say right now, except for uh, visually, I like it. Uh, you know, it feels good in the hand. Um, I forgot to uh, look at the thing. So it does have dual slots and the uh, nice thing about that is redundancy because you can record your footage to two cards at the exact same time or you can set it up so that when one card fills up the other one continues recording but that's useless to me because <laughs> you know uh, the two memory cards main mainly that I'm using one is 512 gigs and the other one is a terabyte um so I don't really run out of memory card space. Um, so having that redundancy um, is going to be a really great plus. Um, that's going to be a really, really get great plus. Um, and yeah, so well, I'm going to go ahead and take another break. Snippity snip, clip, clip all of that shit. And I am going to get the GX85 and the light and everything set up over here. And then we'll be back to talk about coming up and, you know, all of that yada, 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 bing a bag of boomer. How do you do ma? See you uh, uh, with my tumor, I guess. See you with my tumor. So you'll have to excuse my messiness. Um, I'm sorry, I'm like looking up because I got this on the screen above. So that's where I'm looking at. Um, seems like a delay. Um, I hope that this delay isn't like in camera. Uh, I could try something. Oh, no, I can't. Never mind. Uh, uh, there is a uh, trick on here to uh, change the uh, latency for the microphone input on the ATEM. I forget exactly how you do it, but if this comes out delayed, I'll try my best to fix it in post if the latency isn't right. And, uh, you know, try to look into the switcher and try to remember. But anyway, uh, this is just the kit lens, the uh, 12 to 32 millimeter uh, 3.5 on the Lumix uh, GX85 um, and set to like automatic settings. See, that's what I was saying with this, um, what's it, the Cinelite D, I think, hack. Um, Cause there's a, the uh, Lumix, the GX85 doesn't have Cinelite on there, but it does. Um, it's just not available to you, but it is in the firmware. Uh, so there's a hack uh, on YouTube, look it up if you like. And uh, so you can get Cinelike on your GX85 um, and save it as a custom preset, which is exactly what I did. Um, and everything else is pretty much just set to automatic. Um, but, you know, again, this is the kit lens. So that, that's what I was saying about, you know, I could do most everything I want to do with this camera and this lens, really. Uh, but there's some stuff that I can't do and there's some th ways that I could be more creative. Um, with that, you know, that's the thing that they most people don't say about gear. You know, they try to swing the discussion one way or the other. You know, they say, well, you, you know, you can't do shit with, you know, that cheap little $400 camera or, you know, you don't, gear doesn't mean anything at all well you know the truth is in the middle of that you know 
you don't need expensive, you know, super fancy stuff to film. You know, Matt Stone and Trey Parker gave, I think, the best advice on making movies and stuff one time was, uh, I say, you know, whether your budget is five dollars, five million dollars, you know, five billion dollars, whatever, you know, just make stuff, just make stuff. Um, and that's true. But that being said, the gear doesn't make the artist, but you know, there is more that you can do with better gear. Um, you know, it's, it's true. Uh, that's why we buy these additional things like gimbals and, um, you know, external monitors and uh, ambisonics microphones for the ambience. And uh, for me personally, I mix in ambisonic or record in ambisonics just so I can take those, uh, you know, ambient recordings of nature and things like that and then mix it into surround sound uh, ambisonics is beautiful for that um i digress <clears throat> but uh you know you do you do do more with better gear um that being said if you don't have technique or the creativity or whatever you know the most expensive fanciest gear isn't really going to get you very far um you know, that's a, this is basically me justifying <laughs> these upgrades. <laughs> um, but I think that I, you know, I think that they're going to pay off. I think that they're going to be great, some great upgrades. And uh, speaking of greatness, uh, where did it go? Faith break. This uh, vape, I think, is just about ready to be refilled. Well, no, actually, that's uh, it's doing pretty good. It's doing pretty good. You know, if it wasn't for me needing to monitor and like make sure that the picture is looking good, you know, and shit like that, I would kind of like to like just not have the screen behind me at all because it is such a fucking distraction. Because I want to look up and see myself on the screen. And then I'm not looking at the camera. That is the great thing about filming in the other room. With the uh, 25mm 1.7. Uh, because you know I have to set it up on the other side of the room. And then I've got the external. Uh, the feely feel world up on top. Um, you know. So looking at that. From across the room. It's like I'm looking straight at the lens still. Um but, you know, it is whatever, man. But for uh, filming, uh, you know, externally or whatever you want to call it, um, t let me go to the super source here. I think that uh, the, these are going to be my primary lenses for now because, you see, we got, you know, a few different choices. We got our... 45 to 150 so when we need to zoom in on something or you know we want to get something at a nice little distance we got that we got our 25 mil or nifty 50 um because you know 25 millimeter 50 millimeter equivalent see i'm smart <laughs> and whatever and then our 14 mil for our uh you know where we need to film a little bit closer up and hopefully maybe some you know like landscape stuff i might uh, you know, depending on how testing with it goes, I might use that for the uh, nature recordings and stuff for the nature filming. I don't know because I might actually still take this 12 to 32 mil uh, 3.5 and continue to film the nature videos with that just because at its lowest, it doesn't, it, at its, uh, or its highest rather, aperture at you know 3.5 it still doesn't create much in the way of like bokeh and stuff and when we're filming the nature stuff that's that's not what we want you know we don't want that blurry background but we want to see it we want the 3d pop um you know 
we want to see the island in the middle of the river as well as what's behind the island, you know. Uh, we want that depth, but, you know, not a shallow depth. We want, you know, great depth, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, um, but, of course, you know, that 12 to 32 mil is on the camera, on the GX85 right now. How do you do? And um, I think that, you know, what we did right here is going to work out just fine, too. Uh, I like having this, like, right on the, uh, you know, right in front of me like this because the pole itself, you know, with, or with everything on it, you know, it does block just like I was thinking, you know, it does block uh, a little bit obstruct my view with the TV a little bit. Um, so if I was like actually sitting in here watching TV or editing videos or whatever, you know, uh, maybe even, well, no, shooting a tutorial, I'm probably going to still need this. But, you know, when I'm watching TV or editing videos and not filming, uh, you know, these are all on magnet mount. So it's just a matter of pulling it off. Good to go. I like that. Uh, I think that works is going to work out pretty nicely. And so I'm going to save the um, what's coming stuff for a vlog or whatever you want to call it as we test out the uh, GH6 hopefully this evening. And uh, I mean, it'll probably be back to back as far as releases go. Um, but, you know... Um, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to end this and take a break. And then I'll talk about what we're, uh, you know, because we do got some more stuff coming up um, that we're planning on doing. Uh, so, you know, we got stuff to talk about. We got lenses and a brand new used camera to test. Uh, so, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, yeah, you know, that'll be that'll be that test uh oh we are preheated so cheers that's so grave and baby i love you i'll see you in Oh, that vlog here in uh, just a little bit. Bye-bye. Snip and snip. Oh, shit. And I think we're recording. I can't see myself on this tiny screen. Oh, ho, ho. Mm. If I was going to blow this at the microphone, like I was going to do anything. <coughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> Should I not be joking about that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not really a brain tumor. It's an ear tumor. But, you know, it sucks. <laughs>